from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering .next Conference. Brought to you by Nutanix. Good morning, everybody. In 2009, infrastructure professionals and the vendors who supplied products to them started to realize that the cloud was real and that they began to try to replicate that cloud on site. And the first instantiation was what we called converged infrastructure. Converged infrastructure was essentially the combination of storage, server, and networking kind of bolted on together, but prepackaged, pre-tested, and engineered to be installed and delivered in a more seamless fashion to minimize the amount of labor that had to go in to the, to the management of infrastructure. That was around 2009, and that same year, Nutanix was born with a slightly different vision to actually develop a solution uh, that was truly cloud-like for uh, on-prem. Welcome everybody to Nutanix.next 2017. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stu Miniman from SiliconANGLE Wikibon, who is an expert uh, on Nutanix on hyper-converged infrastructure, which was the next instantiation of converged infrastructure. And now, Stu, we see this going into the, to the cloud era. Uh, this Nutanix is a company that's probably going to do close to a billion dollars this year, if not a billion. They got a two and a half billion dollar market cap. They got a, a gross margin model in the high 50s. They're growing at 65, 66% per year. Uh, the stock, when they did their IPO, was a, was a meteoric rise, sort of flattened out since. It's up today uh, on some news uh, that was broken by CNBC that they're doing a deal with Google. This is our, let's see, fourth, third or fourth? It's the third year of the US show, the fourth, fourth Nutanix overall, conference we did overall. Some in Europe. Stu, great to be working with you. We've been you know, together a lot this month at a number of shows. This is sort of the, the capstone of what we call true private cloud and a great instantiation, an example of it. What are your thoughts, early thoughts? Yeah, so on Dave, what to great hear. to be with you as always, and uh, yeah, excited to be here at this show. Uh, one of the things I love in our role as analysts is when you see something in some of the early stages. So I first got introduced to Nutanix when they were about 20 people. A uh, little bit smaller than, say, when I first met VMware, when they were about 100 people. And to watch this company and this wave grow, uh, I remember John Furrier and I interviewed Deeraj, CEO of Nutanix, back at VMworld 2012. And, right, infrastructure and converged infrastructure, I mean, I worked on some of the original, you know, V-block architectures when I worked at EMC. And we're saying, take my storage, take my network, take my compute, put them together, package them, integrate them, try to make it simpler. But when we talked to Deeraj, it wasn't about the infrastructure. He really posited that the challenge of our day is building distributed systems, and it, it's really a software challenge, and that is at the core of what Nutanix's IP, what their engineering mentality is, and they've kept that going forward. So, you know, we always talk about, you know, oh, okay, you know, in our infrastructure silos, Nutanix's vision from day one was to go beyond that. We talk about hybrid cloud or multi-cloud today, uh, that, that's what Nutanix is starting to uh, deliver in their vision. When they first launched themselves as an enterprise cloud, as their market, Everybody was like, what are you talking about? They're an HCI player, what's their cloud mission? Making an announcement with Google shows that they are going to have some partnerships there to live in that hybrid or multi-cloud world. And Dave, I want to clarify, when I, you know, we throw around these terms hybrid and multi, for me these days, I look at it as hybrid is a lot of what I, I, I know you used to call federated. So how do I have a model that really looks the same, whether that's just the application layer or uh, you know, even going down to the infrastructure layer spreading between environments, typically my private cloud and my public cloud, uh, service providers can be in the mix there. Multi-cloud means I've got data and I've got applications that are going to live in multiple public clouds, in multiple data centers. Of course, we've got SaaS, so that differentiates a little differently. Things like Kubernetes are, are really uh, helping with the, that explosion and that discussion of multi-cloud, kind of replacing what we used to talk with uh, PaaS, the platform as a service, where I, I could really be independent of the cloud. So, you know, there's a lot of nuance and detail, which I'm looking forward to digging into. It's, it's over the nuance, next few days. but it's an important nuance because basically you're saying it's not just a bunch of hybrid, it's not just a bunch of clouds. Yeah. It's some kind of you know, federated, yeah, we, we had, it, it's, it's a data plane and a control plane that spans multiple physical locations. Yeah, I, I worry about things like identity. I worry about things as to you know, how does security span these environments. Uh, we, we, you know, governance, of course, uh, 
plays in a lot, but uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure we will hear things about consumption model, because one of the things, cloud consumption model, you know, used to be like, oh, well some business guy just swipes a credit card and goes and does it. Well, shouldn't all infrastructure be as easy to buy as we did? I mean, Dave, you remember a decade ago we always talked about the consumerization of IT. Now it's really that cloudification of IT with companies like Amazon really driving forth the model that everyone wants to copy. So since we've started researching uh, Nutanix and talking to some of its customers, two years ago at the, at, at, at the initial .next conference at uh, the Fontainebleau in Miami, really talked to a number of customers and you could see the enthusiasm for simplicity. Uh, you could see the desire to reduce their reliance on VMware and the VTAX that was hanging over their heads. Yeah. And at that time, a couple years ago, Nutanix introduced Acropolis, which is essentially a hypervisor inside of its, what they call now the cloud operating system. Uh, and, and so, but that is a strategic move by a company that's basically saying, hey, we're not just hyper-converged, because everybody's now pivoting to hyper-converged, we're cloud. So it's a message to the financial world, to the, to the industry analysts, and to the customers that we have a vision and to the financial world, we have a large TAM. The financial guys are worried about, always worried about TAM expansion. That's their TAM expansion play. Now, bringing it back to some of their financials just briefly, Nutanix essentially loses 37 cents from an, on an operating basis on every dollar of revenue it makes. Okay, that's I guess in vogue these days. But it's funny accounting, because they don't recognize the full value of their OEM deals, like the Dell deal. Again, some nuance. And there are some accounting changes that are occurring which should be a tailwind for this company from just from the optics of the income statement. So you're going to see, and I think the street's finally starting to understand this. Again, stock's up today on the, on the, on the Google news, that's, that no press release yet, but CNBC broke that news. What do we know about that? Yeah, uh, so, so first of all, right, the, the accounting change is coming this summer. If I remember right, I, I believe it's August. Yeah. So that means that rather than taking the three-year subscription and only taking a small piece of that today and pushing most of it out to the future, uh, there will be a restatement of all of Nutanix's number, which, right, will, will be a tailwind, as you said, and push all that in. Um, Google, uh, number one is you look at, you know, one of the you know, most interesting dynamics of Nutanix is, it's been the relationship with VMware. I did an interview with Dheeraj right after the IPO. I was at the headquarters, sitting with him in this you know, beautiful library that they have there, and he turns to me and he's like, you know, on camera, he says, Stu, you know, if VMware hadn't been so negative on us and not allowing us to OEM or ship their product, I don't know if we would have launched our own hypervisor. It was not an initial plan. It was something that he's talked to the analyst community and talked and said this is something that was not simple, it was not something that was done lightly, it was something that they, their hand was really forced because customers say, I want the simplicity, I want to be able to just stand it up, I need that to come pre-installed, and there was additional value that Nutanix felt they could bring. The, the DNA that they had, as they said, from companies like Facebook, uh, from Google, uh, and the like, where they understand uh, you know, the, the, the underlying you know, code that they need to build to be able to build this distributed architecture. So building off of KVM, they built the Acropolis hypervisor. Um, one of the next big shifts coming is containerization, and this is where Google fits in. They should be able to accelerate that move, which is, the thing I worried about with hyperconverged is we took our virtualized SAN environments and we just put them in a slightly different form factor. It's simpler, yes, it's great, uh, it, it's going to be you know, hopefully a, a better economic environment, but how do we move the company forward faster? Two years ago, the customers were really excited because they said, I got my weekends back. What you want from an IT department is not to say, hey, I'm no, 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 no longer just overworked, but I'm driving the business forward. But Dave, you've always said the role of the CIO is not just to you know, maintain the business, but you know, to transform and grow the business. So that's where we need things like containerization to help companies be more agile and move faster and have IT turn into uh, a, a force that can help code, create new business lines, leverage our data more. Uh, the, the, the thing that we've heard at every storage show we've been at recently, Dave, is you know, uh, NetApp actually says storing is boring, uh, and that is something that we hear, is I need to leverage our data, we need to get it out there, and that's what you know, I'm looking for this week, is to hear more of that cloud native piece. I was at the Cloud Foundry Summit a couple weeks ago. I could sit that on top of Nutanix, so how does partnerships like Google and, and some of these environments help with you know, application modernization, you know, analytics where I can get new, you know, 
take my data and create new business value, because that's where we're going to really transform and grow companies into new revenue streams, and Nutanix is a platform to help deliver on that. So Stu, since the spring, when we released our latest uh, True Private Cloud report, uh, with the Wikibon team, there's been a lot of talk about uh, that report, its implications. Uh, we had, there was a blog post today from, from Yaron Haviv at Iguazio saying you guys need to rethink your definition of, of true private cloud because the, the on-prem guys have no chance against the cloud guys. We don't agree with that, by the way. But the notion of true private cloud is this, this on-prem infrastructure that substantially mimics the public cloud, and as I said before, has a control plane that spans multiple physical locations. That's a, a concept that we've kind of put forth and started to, to quantify because there was so much cloud washing going on. And it really is, frankly, the savior of the existing infrastructure guys, or could be, because their legacy business is not growing, in fact it's declining, uh, and this is a very high growth market opportunity for these folks. So, my question to you is, can Nutanix participate in that high growth market? You know, there seems to be an aspiration, maybe I'm overstating this, but to be the next VMware yeah. of sorts. No, no. Can they do it? A exactly, and Dave, you're not overstating it. I I've heard people from Nutanix say that's, that was their target. Their target wasn't to replace a flex pod. Their, their, their overall vision was right to be the, the next VMware. They want to be a platform uh, to be able to grow on that. And the thing I've been looking at at every show when we go to infrastructure is how do you live in that multi-cloud world? Because you can't put blinders on and say, right, well, Amazon's in a corner. No, we know Amazon, customers are using them. Uh, so, you know, right, as you said, Dave, I want that operational model in my own in environment to build what we called a true private cloud. Absolutely, Nutanix is a player there. Uh, there's still work to be done for all of these infrastructure players, but what are they doing? How does their control plane span uh, beyond that? And why should Nutanix be more uh, than just a piece of the infrastructure? Because it, there are lots and lots of players, not only the infrastructure players, lots of software companies and the cloud companies themselves that are going to say, I'm going to own that piece. I mean, Microsoft identity is one of their greatest strengths. Google and Amazon have been you know, going after that. I mean, Amazon's eating everything, Dave. So why should Nutanix not just eat some of the old guys, but be a player that lasts into, into the new world? Is uh, you know, looking forward to the announcements later tonight. We've got a lot of their partners and customers on uh, here to be able to deliver proof points. And Nutanix is still growing, still doing real well, uh, and uh, you know, to be exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah, so we're going to be covering this wall-to-wall -wall coverage of two days. Uh, we've got some great uh, outside guests coming in. We got uh, Diane Greens, you know, speaking at this event. Bill McDermott speaking at the event. And word is Peter McKay from Veeam is going to make another appearance. He's like the cube. He's everywhere. Uh, and then some really interesting outside speakers. Melotra is here again. So really excellent uh, lineup that we have for you guys uh, this week. Two days wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is cube. We'll be back from the district live in Washington D.C. This is Nutanix.next. Be right back. Robert Hershevik.